Hey there, everyone. Good to see you again. Thanks for checking this video out. Um, this is just kind of a spur of the moment video. I had no intention of doing this at all up until maybe last night or this morning. So uh, I've done some Rush tutorials uh, in the past and kind of had a, got into a Rush mood yesterday, I guess. Um, started listening to Hemispheres off of the album Hemispheres. And, you know, listen to the whole thing, love, love that, that, that piece in its entirety. And from there, it goes right into Circumstances off the same album. And I really started listening to that for, for one particular riff that I really liked. It's, it's the, uh, I guess, the going into the, into the, uh, the chorus. That whole riff right there. I'm like, oh, I should go back and try to revisit that. Just to, just to mess around with it. It's kind of a cool riff just to play. And, um... As I'm listening to the song, I realize there's a lot of cool riffs throughout this entire song. A lot of really nice pieces. And I've always thought of the song as being one of the more difficult songs to play. But in, in actuality, if you know some of the basic chords and a few variations that Lifeson usually uses, it's actually very manageable. So I kind of went back through it again today, just tried a few things. And, you know, I figured, you know what, let me just throw it out there. This isn't going to be a note-for-note -note tutorial of exactly how many times he plays this note or that chord is strummed. It's just kind of, you know, something fun to do. And if it helps you out, some cool riffs there. Um, if you're looking to learn some Rush riffs, I think there's a couple in here that are really cool. What I found out with some of these riffs, though, I think our, our mind and our brain are trained in a way where we're going to play. And, you know, the mind is telling the fingers to go one way traditionally. But there's a few things happening in this song where you have to really tell your fingers to do something that they're not used to doing. So there's a few different things in this song that happens, whether it's, uh, you know, from that riff I did or just some of the chord progressions. But it's a fun tune to play. So I'm not going to go into, you know, super close-ups or anything. I'm just going to kind of, you know, blow through a few things here, tell you what the chords are, the, you know, the, the, the riffs. And if it helps you out, cool. Um, I, I would say I'm probably about 80% there with this, so it's just going to be a matter of just breaking down, you know, the intro, the chorus, the, the verse, some of the, the, you know, the bridge and the breakdown, that, and that one riff in particular, which I really like. So, um, you know, let's we'll just kind of get right into it. It's really just, the, 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 uh, the intro was very simple. It's three notes, um, and what I'm playing through, you can't see it, I'm playing through a Boss Katana 50, the Mark II, and I, I just tried to get the best tone that I could which is basically just kind of going through the, uh, I think it's the brown channel. I've got um, the treble really about 3 o'clock, the middle is about 10 o'clock, and the bass is about 1 o'clock. That seemed to give me the best, you know, some of that best tone that I thought for that period of Alex Likes in, in the band. So, but it's three notes. All you're playing there is you're playing on the fifth fret, uh, fifth string, I should say, the, the C to the B to the G on the six to an A minor. That's really it. Now, I've seen the the live version of Snakes and Arrows where this is on there. I, I hear minor chords. I think Alex is playing just power chords. You can get away with either one. So if you don't want to play the minor... Just kind of, you know, just just play the one and the five, basically. But it's so it's the A minor. You're gonna play that again, but in the middle, you're gonna you're gonna put a B, um, a B minor chord. There you are so far. And then the, the G and the D, and then repeat. Think about that for a second. Back to the. That's pretty much your intro. I mean, play around with it. Uh, I think there's enough there where you, you can mess around with it, play along to the album, and just try to maybe hear some more of the, the specifics there. Going into the verse, um, you're playing some chords that you typically wouldn't play together, especially going from a B to a G. sharp 
Again, whatever's easiest for you, you can do the B here. I think Lifeson plays it up here to the G, to the D, A, D, A, to the F sharp. So. All right. And then from there, to the G, to the B, to a C, to an A. All right, so coming out of that, the, the, uh, the verse, it's going to be, it's that, in, uh, I think it starts with the, the word innocence. No, it's not it. I forget what the, what, the, what the vocal is, but it's a G. Okay. That, the innocent comes here now. To a, uh, I guess you're gonna, it's a D sharp somehow there. So you're gonna go from a D. And then we're gonna take the bass note, move it to the sixth string, a uh, six, uh, six fret, I should say. I keep, so, I keep the D there, I move the bass note down, and then I add my pinky to the third string eighth fret. To an E. Okay, so it's... Then a C and a G. So let me play that kind of a little more cohesive there. C to G. All right. Um, and then you go into that riff, which I was kind of just talking about before. Hang on, let me just tune up here. Uh, this thing is always going out of tune just enough to make things difficult. All right, there we go. So the riff, this is one of those things where you, your fingers want to do one thing, but they've got to go and do something else, right? So I'll go through this pretty quickly as well. It's an open A to the 7 on the D string. And then on the D string, 5, 7. Okay. Then we're going to the 5 on the D. 4 on the D. 5 on the A. So I think this, this is like uh, uh, the time, time signatures in 7s, I think, here. Okay. So again, open, a, open D. Seven on the D string. Try that again. Open A. Seven on the D. Five seven on the A. Five four on the D. Back to the five on the A. Okay. Okay. And then I, I guess you kind of got a little bit of a pattern here. You're gonna go. Um, Third fret on the A. Five, two on the D. So it's, we're on the A three. Five, two on the D. We're gonna hit that C note again on the fifth string. Five, two on the A. Okay. All right. And then from there, on that sixth string, you're going to go from the G to the F. And then back to the C, B, G, A. So, slowly. So, in a way, it's easy, but in a way, it's not because you're... you're your, your fingers want to go one way, and your mind is telling you to go a different way. So it's going to take some time getting used to that. That's just more muscle memory. Keep doing it over and over again. Just like the 
the verse. I mean, you're playing some chords that typically don't go together. So, um, just, you just kind of got to get used to that. So, it's... So that's, that's that riff right there, and it goes into the chorus, which mainly is that intro again. Only difference there is that there you're adding a C chord and a G. So pretty much you're playing though that, that same riff you were doing earlier on earlier on. Listen to the album for that again. I'm just trying to go through this real quick. Um, something I just kind of thought of that I figured I would just you know put it out there if it helps you out if you want to learn a few riffs. So um, that's kind of I think the, the you know the verse and the chorus, and then there's that breakdown, um, really which is kind of mainly around the, the, the keyboard, and that's where the guitar main mainly goes to more of a rhythm um, role, so to speak. So what I do is I move everything down to the if you're using katana, uh, katana by chance. I go to the clean, and I'm just adding um, a little bit of chorus for the modulation. So what I do is, you're going to be using bar chords, or, or I should say power chords if you want. Um, you're going to use a C, a D, and it's actually an E minor up here. So it's going to be um, 6th string on the 8th fret, 10th string, or 10th um, fret on the D and the A strings, and everything else will be open. You're not going to use all the strings, but it's basically just you're going to fret it that way. You're going to fret it the same way, which is up two more frets for the D and the 12th fret. And then again, when you have to go down to the E minor. So all I'm doing is I'm going to be picking. I'm going to go six. I'm going to go, yeah, I guess six, five. That's called the, the letters of the string down E, A, D. The open G, back up to the D. Same pattern, just up two frets. And I'm going to do the same thing. But I'm adding one more note. I'm adding that um, G string again. And then when it changes, it's just going up to this power chord here on the 12th. That's really it. You can do, I think he does it five times. So that's really all that is. Pretty straightforward. Just a matter of getting used to that. Does that? I think I said. I think it's five times, and then he kicks back in with the distortion. Um, and it's just two chords, basically. So it's an A and a B, but you're not barring your You're gonna just, you're gonna keep the, uh, the high E and the B strings open. Very, like, life's in life. Now, if that sounds familiar, that is actually the same progression he used on the tune Clockwork Angels on the last album. So, off course there for a little bit, but figure I'd just drop that in there. So you're going to do the A. And then at some point you're going to go back into that C. Okay, you do that a couple times, and then from there you're going back into that riff. That's really it. So I know it's a real quick kind of lesson. I wasn't really looking to, to do this at all, but I figured it was just kind of cool. A couple riffs in there, and, and maybe that'll help you whether it's learn some rush riffs or actually kind of just learn to have your fingers do some things or not traditionally used to, like this riff right here, you know, because you're doing things that typically you're not doing all the time when you're playing, so, um, 
So this is really kind of off the cuff, no notes, no nothing, just kind of, you know, powering through it real quick. Um, if it was helpful, cool. If not, you know, I get it. There wasn't much prep for this one, but I just wanted to kind of get it out there and see if it helps you out a little bit. You know, I'm a huge Rush fan. I know there's a lot of other people out there that are. So, um, you know, hopefully it helps you out and good luck with it, all right? Thanks very much for watching.